Elton bid to return to their early season form after four straight defeats. Today they face Terry Cooper's Birmingham at Upton Park. And Charlton are just one month away from the long-awaited return to the Valley after a seven-year absence. Rebuilding continues apace. Got his working gear on uh, this Sunday and, and Alan, it's fair to say a bit harder work for you at the moment after that fantastic start to the yes, season. Yes, uh, once again today we come to this live game and we've lost two players in training uh, yesterday. Uh, Simon Webster's out and Darren Pitcher's out, so we've had to make a couple more changes. And uh, the run we've had lately, uh, we've not won for our last three league games. And I've just had a look at the team, and when we've done so well at the start of the season, we had a settled side, but from the first game of the season, we've got six changes. Can you pinpoint where things have gone wrong for you, what you've got to put right today? It's possibly the amount of change we've had to make through injuries, and also the sales of Robert Lee and Anthony Barnes has affected us. Uh, once uh, Robert went, we, we signed John Robinson to uh, replace him, and he got injured in the first game. So we struggled there, but he's back now, and I'm hoping after Saturday's game at Derby, where we played quite well, we can get back on a winning way. And you've got very close uh, affiliations, haven't you, with Birmingham, and we've dug out a goal that you scored, a heck of an important goal yes. for Birmingham, and it's a free kick, and well, you, you better, you're good at this now, aren't you? You better tell me what well, happens here. It was the last game of the season, we needed a point to go up and uh, that made it 2-0. I think we actually went 3-1 in the lead and uh, Notch County got back to 3 all with 20 minutes to go and there was a lot of panic there. I can, I can assure you, there, I think there was 34,000 there. Right. A lot of panic setting after that, but we got up. OK, Alan, we're looking forward to an improved performance from your team today anyway. Yes, hopefully, and uh, there's no greater incentive because we can go third. Of course you can. Thanks very much for joining Thank us. You. Good luck this afternoon. Same back to you. Good afternoon to you, Saint. Yes, here come the teams for this first division game, Birmingham City. In that startling strip of blue against Charlton. Both sides, as Rodney was saying, go through a, a pretty rough period at the moment. Charlton looking to pull out of a dive, really, unbeaten in their first 12, but then they've lost their last four. And uh, Birmingham, for their part, one win in their last nine. Let's have a look at the teams then. The Charlton with uh, Mike Salmon in goal today, Bob Boulder's rested. Two is Stuart Barmer, three Scott Minto. Four is Alan Pardew. Five, 18-year-old Linvoy Primus gets his first game because skipper Simon Webster's got a hamstring trouble. Six is Steve Gatting, who's the captain today. Seven, John Robinson. Eight, John Bumstead. He returns after injury, replacing Darren Pitcher, who's got a foot injury. Nine is Carl Lieber. Ten, Kim Grant. And 11, Colin Walsh. They thought they got a clean bill of health to Charlton last Thursday, but injuries have now caused a bit of a reshuffle. Primus now partners Gatting at the centre of the defence. Bumstead, Chelsea fans certainly know how competitive he can be, goes into the midfield with Lieben and Grant up front. A rare chance then for Mike Salmon in the Charlton goal. He's played only nine games since joining in 1989 and none in the last two years. While Birmingham City, for their part, have got a familiar figure between the sticks for them. Les Seeley, Mr Angry, once of Coventry, Luton. A great spell he had at Manchester United, which included an FA Cup win and a Cup Winners' Cup win, now on loan from Aston Villa. So the Birmingham side then with Les Seeley in goal. Uh, number two is Paul Holmes. Three, 17-year-old Graham Potter making his uh, league debut. Four is David Rennie, the captain. Five, Martin Hicks, who began his career with Charlton. Six, Trevor Mathewson. Eight, Ian Rogerson. Nine, Simon Sturridge. Uh, nine, David Speedy on loan from Southampton. Ten is Darren Rowbottom. And eleven, Louis Donoua. Defensive change there. John Frain's move to Sunderland has collapsed over the last couple of days. The feeling is that he's not really in tune in his mind to this game. So 17-year-old Potter plays at left back his first game. Really scoring goals has been Birmingham's biggest problem this season. Speedy is aiming to improve that for them. Let's take a look at the uh, substitutes today. For Charlton, it's Gary Nelson and Alex Dyer. And for Birmingham, Mark Cooper, the manager's son, and Ian Clarkson. And our referee today comes from Horsham in Sussex. It's Mike James. Dave Bassett's up alongside me here. Good conditions today, David. Pitch looking good. Yes, it's excellent. Uh, considering two teams play here regular, it's looking very good. It uh, just got that little bit of grease on the top, which uh, usually is conducive to good football. 
to ask you while we've got a moment. What were you up to yesterday at Chelsea, getting on the wrong side of the fans? It's all in the newspapers today. What's that about? Yeah, well, I think it's a mountain out of a molehill, really. Uh, I was shouting some instructions to Glenn Hodges about what I wanted Jamie Hoyland to do, and the fans were giving me a bit of chire. Kind of turned around and sort of having laughs, told them to shut up, and one or two got sort of a bit excited. And uh, unfortunately, one or two fans seem to have accused me of uh, making obscene gestures and swearing, which is not like me, particularly in those instances. Exactly. Well, here we go with Birmingham City to kick off here at Upton Park. Blue strip attacking the goal to our right. Benny quickly transferring the ball, giving a, a first touch in the league for young Graham Potter. And uh, the first touch there for Mick Salmon. His first game for two years, as I was saying, taking the place of Bob Boulder, whose form has wavered a little bit. He's a good keeper, is Bob Boulder, but he's a good pro also, and he was the first to admit that his form and his confidence have gone a little bit. Hence, Mick Salmon in today. a little over a month away from their return to the valley and uh, their crowds no doubt will get bigger and the atmosphere better and they are no longer tenants here at Upton Park so a corner for Birmingham City be taken by Ian Rogerson, the number seven big Martin Hicks up at the uh, near post for them David Rennie, another six footer it's a big, physically a big side this Birmingham side but uh, Robinson got that one away for Charlton. Up now to uh, Redonna, played in again towards Hicks. They are a physically very big side. Just looking at them now, there's uh, Matthewson, in fact, who got that header in as a six-footer. Hicks is well over six foot. Wren is a six-footer. Just as well, they haven't got John Gale playing. Yes, John Gale, who has uh, got an injury at the former Wimbledon player. Got an injury in the week. Because he's something like 6'3, six, 6'4, six, isn't he? That's right, he's a very big guy, John. Robinson just keeping it in play. Formerly with Brighton. Stopped by Potter. Robinson, who joined Charlton when uh, Robert Lee left for Newcastle. But a good indication early on of the 17-year-old fullback. Full he handled that uh, particularly well down that flank. Eburn fails to get it in the air. Birmingham get it away. Primus getting a good little header in there. Grant looking to make something of it. And Pardew's header clearing the Birmingham City crossbar with plenty to spare. And also at the same time Kim Grant down with an injury. See what happened here. Took it nicely on his chest. And the feet was rather... Yes, it was a foot that was rather high there, David. Yeah, it wasn't intentional. I think as he came out, the player was trying to come in from the front and he's just caught him. It's probably one of those things that are more painful for a few moments than actual uh, permanent damage. But the fair-haired young boy on the far side, the Birmingham number three, Graham Potter, Terry Cooper, who knows a fair bit about left-back play himself, thinks he's got a real chance. But at 17... Coming in now, it's quite a test for him, but he acquitted himself well there just a moment ago against John Robinson. That's right, he got a good challenge in, and he'd be obviously delighted to be at 17 playing in the first team, and, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll be excited, and uh, it'll be a good test for him also in his terms of his uh, character to see how he copes. Walsh. free kick to Charlton We're taken by uh, Steve Gatting who's taken over the uh, captain's role with uh, Simon Webster out of the side Carl Lieburn up ahead Kim Grant's in there as well Primus is in there too Pardew with the header Lieburn knocks it across Knocked back again, Pardew shot, should have been a goal, but finishes again amongst the travelling Birmingham fans. And Mr Angry making his voice heard early on, and indeed there was some pretty sloppy defending there, defending there by Birmingham City. Lieburn does well here to get across in, and uh, the Birmingham player miscontrols it, and the young Primus does well. Alan Pardew will be disappointed that he hasn't hit the target there. 
quite interesting the Charlton side's got a, a lot of young players but it's sprinkled with like Walsh, Gatting and Bumstead which is just a nice little bit of experience to go with them and of course if Charlton win this one today although they've lost their last four games they had such a good start if they do win today and pick up the three points they go back into third place in the first division table so the incentive is pretty big for them here's Cleburne and again played into Walsh Bottom playing it wide towards Donawa. Hicks getting in there first, up to Speedy. Ardue away. It's done well this season for them, Alan Pardew. Seven goals, one of them from the penalty spots. Came on a free transfer from Crystal Palace. Birmingham, Speedy. Holmes dispossessed. As Walsh takes it up now for Charlton. Minto on a good break for them. Colin Walsh again. Good wily campaigner down that left hand side. So much experience originally with Nottingham Forest. Steve Gatting now. is chasing it, Seal is out of his goal <laughs> Speedy trying to outwit Primus here but Salmon getting above the wall Something about David Speedy, whenever he plays, the crowd instantly take, at least the opponents or the uh, opposition crowd always take an instant dislike to him and that's get a quick response from the other fans as well, his own fans. But he's a real sparky little character with a good goal scoring record wherever he's been. Of course had a good spell in London with Chelsea. Palmer gets it away. Birmingham City's throw. Had a one away win this season for Birmingham City, but that was at Cambridge where it's never very easy to win as West Ham knew yesterday. They won their 3 0. So a throw to uh, Charlton Athletic. Carl Lieben with it. Primus has gone forwards. Look at Grant, the amount of time, or at least the amount of space he had there. They closed very quickly on him, but uh, it was a dangerous moment there for Birmingham City. Grant trying to get in on this one. Hicks holding him up. Knocked in again there, Grant couldn't quite get ahead of that one, and Primus couldn't get a foot to that one. Robinson. Knocked in again towards Grant, but just touched down there by the Birmingham number six, Trevor Mathewson. Given away again, Barmer playing it towards Colin Walsh. Here's Leeburn. Walsh. Side flag up against uh, Kim Grant, who hadn't got back quickly enough. Often feel sometimes it's not necessary to give offside in those instances because the player's obviously trying to get back on side and he's not involved in the play. But uh, I think sometimes the officials are under so much pressure to make those decisions that they just automatically do it. Yes, it's true. You can understand the linesman. The linesman's got to give what he sees, but uh, the referee can always say, "No, let's let's play on." 
That's what I would think, Brian. And a lot of referees don't do that now. They, they, they do whatever the linesman signals, really. And you'll quite rightly say uh, they don't have to give that. Can't get it through to Speedy. Gatting's header, though, comes as far as Donawa. Rennie. Potter just getting it back. Matthewson. Rennie. Out to the 17 year old again. Rennie again. Playing it wide again for Donawar on that side. And it comes through in the end of some. Well, the young boy Potter's settled down. He's been involved in one or two good moves and he's got a good left foot. He's uh, obviously enjoying himself. Yeah, Terry Cooper was telling me just before the game that uh, when he's on the ball they've got no fears for him. It's just uh, obviously at the age of 17 they're not quite sure about his positional sense at the moment. They've been working on that as much as they can this week. He's doing that so far so good. Yeah. Are you getting it back to Bumstead? Play now for Minto. Here's Walsh. Onto the right foot. Seeing well behind it. 35 years old now. And we're just over 10 minutes gone. Nil nil. Gatting. Speedy backing into it. Pardew, Walsh, I've seen a very good cross there, oh, that was a terrible error there in the Birmingham defence and uh, Matthewson was the main perpetrator and oh, excellent to be allowed to go across that six yard area like that uh, David. It was excellent cross, it's good skill, Lee Byrne and Kim Grant you know have got to react better than that you know it was a great chance, Seeley was in no, uh, two minds whether to come and take it and he decided to leave it and really a touch then and it's a goal. Walsh then with a corner for Charlton. Catting up there, Pardew in there, Lieburn at the near post, they play it short. Then long towards Gatting. Puts it back again. And over the top there from Primus. Excellent boy Primus, just 18 years old, comes from Stratford just down the road here in his first year as a pro. Yet another good cross, Gatting gets a cross in uh, under pressure and the young lad does quite well. He'd been pleased to have scored. Potter knocking it on. There's some high kicking there. By Sturridge I think it was on uh, Balmer. Second bite at it, hits it long. Steve Gritz, part of the management partnership here with Alan Kerbishley at Charlton. Touch by Grant. What a good touch that was. Finding uh, Bumstead. Minto sweeping it now to Walsh. Goes down very quickly and well by Paul Holmes for Birmingham City. Came in June, he did. Having played for Doncaster and Torquay, the uh, right back. And a goal kick. Still got a valuable part to play, Colin Walsh, hasn't he, in this Charlton setup? Yeah, he's an experienced player, and uh, I think he does a good job for them. They never seem quite the same side when he's not playing. Carl Lever. Well, he's got the pace to get away from him, apparently, and not quite the ability to get the pass inside to Kim Grant, and it's a goal kick.
just say one or two little question marks about this Birmingham defence in the opening uh, quarter of an hour or so, uh, David? Yeah, Cholton seem to be got into their stride and playing their type of football and uh, they, they're basically on top and Birmingham not really causing any threats and the defence doesn't look too strong. Gatting gets it away. Ardieu. Walsh. Hicks. Martin Hicks, who uh, a challenging lever, and he had over 500 games as a player for Reading. Rennie going in, Hicks for Birmingham. Charlton's form improved a good deal last week, although they lost 4-3 at Derby, they were much happier last week about their form than they had been for the previous uh, three or four games. I think it's an important game for them because they had an extremely good start and uh, then having lost the last four games they need to get back and get a victory to uh, put them back in the frame really otherwise you start to slip away and I'm sure Alan realises that and Steve. Cooper, Leeds United and England. They're trying to sort Birmingham City out. I certainly get the feeling, not, I don't live in the city so I don't really know, but I mean, uh, you get the feeling over the years they really haven't punched their weight. They are a big city club. They have languished in the third and then the second and are now seeking to get the right sort of formula together to hit the high spots again. Primus with a good header away. Up to Grant. The Birmingham fans and uh, certainly Birmingham, the Birmingham management feel that uh, if they get the breeze behind them, they can command the same sort of attention that Aston Villa are getting up in the second city at the moment. That's right, they've got the, the capabilities to be a big club. They have been a big club. It's uh, somewhat of a shame that they've been in the doldrums for so long and the fans sometimes get depressed in those situations but uh, they'd be pleased that they're back in the second division and uh, if they can build on that and improve uh, and start challenging for a Premier League status then I think the fans will turn up it's now called the first division Dave as yes. Speedy gallops away there for Birmingham but it's gone behind for the corner never quite got used to that yet so it'll be the number 70 in Rogerson to take it a lot of attention from uh, scouts from top clubs is number seven they've got Hicks at the near post Speedy just in front of goalkeeper Salmon Rennie is in there as well for the shortish corner and that was quite easy in the end for Mike Salmon cost a hundred thousand pounds when he came from uh, Wrexham back in 1989 Hicks up well. Walsh. Play for Pardew. And the shake off. The number 10 row bottom. Free kick to Chow. These are always suspect areas to give free kicks away. They can prove to be very costly if you get a good delivery and people get on the end of them. People like Lee Byrne. Stands six foot three. 
Gatting's up from the back as well. Bymus, another six-footer, is in there from the back. Walsh delivering the cross in, but that might be a little too close to Seeley. And uh, a real threat from Leeburn. Just for a moment, he looked as though he may have lost it. This is Palmer getting it back again for Charlton. Rennes header for Birmingham. And a handball, a free kick for Charlton. Stuart Barmer, Scottish boy, formerly with Celtic. Let go, let go. And will be a goal kick. Both sides finding goals difficult to come by, as I've said earlier. Charlton with only seven in their last ten games. And Birmingham only 14 all season in 15 games. 20 minutes gone. It said that, needless to say, it's nil-nil here now. Robinson, third, comes through to Speedy. Robinson gets it back again. Gatting. Paul Holmes with the throw. Simon Sturridge. Holmes, Sturridge, and then hit long towards Speedy, falling nicely for John Robinson, but right away ahead of him, and Leeburn as well. It goes Bumstead. This time Walsh hadn't got back quickly enough. Ready. Primus. Right to Rogerson. Primus. This is Hicks for Birmingham. Rogerson again being challenged by Minto. Ball coming to Rennie. And out of young Graham Potter. Good challenge though by uh, Steve Gatting. Robinson up to Lieber. Got a few up, Charlton now. This is Kim Grant. And now Walsh. He gets it onto that left foot. Oh. I think one or two of the Charlton players were looking for the cross there, and uh, Robinson's a bit disappointed. And in fairness, I think that would have been the better option. Birmingham at the moment look as if they're sort of hoping something might happen for them. And I think that's sort of a little bit about their play, they're tentative at the moment, and possibly that's due to their away form and uh, what they've done this season so far. See this kick. Lieber. Bardieu helped on by the hand, surely. yards outside his penalty area hits it towards Louis Donner gets a little header and then a good turn here by Speedy well maybe not such a good turn because there's a foul on the way Speedy none too impressed by that decision and Mike James coming across to uh, have a little word with him about that moment of petulance and Barmer takes the free kick for Chuck Seely away. Primus with the header. Again, Holmes hasn't got uh, rather. Uh, Grant hasn't got back quickly enough. Is 
that drive a manager mad when uh, you know, maybe you've got something going and a guy just hasn't got back quickly enough from an offside position? I think it's difficult when the ball gets played back to the goalkeeper that happens and that's one of the downsides of the actual back pass. I mean, I'm pleased that uh, we do the keepers can't pick it up and waste time now, but uh, that is a problem. Could be a problem here for Charlton. Oh, uh, I think gets it away. Holmes. by Rennie and a goal kick the downside being that the game moves so much quicker now that uh, if the ball goes back to the goalkeeper he hits it straight away and people are going to get caught off that's side right, the whistle not. goes and the game stops in any case that's, that's uh, the hard part of it I think sometimes one might just have a look and think well is that player going to be involved in the next attack if he's not you might just leave it go but it is a difficult one as I say the linesman finds himself forced to make that decision Rogerson with the header Gatting up to Lieber but well there particularly as Lieber and had Hicks's boot wrapped around his rib cage it'll be Gatting with the free kick for Charlton still nil-nil here just past the 25 minute mark bumps it Primus. It's just gone a little bit flat the last few minutes of the game. Uh, Neither side can sort of exert their authority, and uh, Cholton was doing that quite well early on. Here's Grant. Bumps it. Played in quickly and accurately, but neither Leibon nor uh, Walsh could pick it up. There's an infringement there. It's a free kick to Birmingham City. Les making a point to the referee. It's an amazing career he's had really, isn't it, when you think about it? Yes, amazing. He's had one career at Coventry, another one at Luton. Yeah, quite an amazing uh, couple of seasons at Manchester United. And he got himself suspended at Aston Villa, didn't he? I think he was saying to me just now, he said, if I hadn't been suspended, I think I might have been in the first team there still. But Nigel Spink came back, kept his place. And there he is on loan to Birmingham. That's right, that's the margins. That looked like a handball by Grant. But he's a pretty uh, incredible character, this Birmingham City goalkeeper, isn't he? And, uh, yeah, he's meant to be a lively lad and uh, plenty to say on that and enthusiastic in the dressing room. Robinson getting it up to Grant. Robinson continuing the run, but they play the ball back to Barmer now. It's up towards Robinson, but Young Potter's there with a header that just goes into touch, but it'll be a throw then to Charlton Athletic, which Stuart Barmer will take. Grant has come away, taken up a good little position to get himself a yard or two, a little flick on there by Walsh. Rennie putting it away, emergency action there behind for the corner to Charlton I think that was a sensible decision, it could have been otherwise a collision between him and uh, Seeley Colin Walsh will take it Rennie's header and Rennie's clearance And Charlton's throw.
Birmingham are getting a lot of people behind the ball and uh, Cholton are finding it difficult to break through this precise moment. Earlier they were just a little bit more positive and doing it, uh, their passing a bit quicker as well. Walsh. Minto. Robinson on this side. And throw to Charlton. Minto with it. And Holmes gets it away. Up towards Speedy. Primus is there with him. Foul by Speedy. I must feel he's getting picked on. He can't do much right for either the linesman or the referee, but it's another free kick. But in fact, the free kick's given uh, not where Speedy uh, had the little clash with Primus. It is. It's come back to where it was. This little clash with Primus. Palmer. Lee Burns touch not quite getting through to Minto. Speedy looking around to see who might be available. Bumstead just possesses him for a moment. Minto here now for Charlton. They get it back. Speedy this time, or Donald on the far side. Primus again getting it away, setting Robinson in motion again for Charlton Athletic. Bit of shoving there by Grant. On Matthewson and a free kick to Birmingham City. Other than the free kick, really, Birmingham haven't threatened uh, the Charlton goal. And if they're going to win the game, they're certainly going to have to be a bit more of an attacking force uh, in the second half. It's Potter then with the throw. header there by Minto and taking it on well Ian Walsh worked this left side very well indeed but I don't think that pass is going to reach Lieburn but there was just a marginal error there by Hicks Lieburn stepped in and then gives it away here to David Rennie but in comes Barmer taking it up well a good interception there by the Charlton fullback trying to get Grant in here Again, they were quite incisive then, Charlton. Stuart Barmer did well to intercept this ball. And he goes on and plays to Kim Grant, who drives across and really Cole Leeburn's got to be looking to get in the six-yard box there. So Seeley with the goal kick. In the last minute of the first half, nil-nil. As we said, it was dead. It was uh, livened up the last ten minutes. Palmer well, getting it away. And again. Grant. Walsh. And space over here for Minto. Walsh again. I think the fact that Walsh comes deep on occasions, it does allow Scott Minto to get forward, and he does like to attack. Time added on at the end of the first 45 minutes. Only keeping a close watch here on Grant. For the throw to Charlton, no, it's been given uh, Birmingham's way. Steps in, Gatting, back to Salmon. 
Lieber just touching it on. Rennie now for Birmingham, the half-time whistle. Stalemate over the first 45 minutes. But really, thanks in no small measure to that wonderful save by Les Seeley from Kim Grant just before half-time. A real quality reaction save. I wonder he can afford to smile, Mr. Angry. Half-time then here at Upton Park, it's Charlton Athletic nil, Birmingham City nil. In Charlton just about to come out for the second half. The boys in the studio are expecting a great improvement. I think you're hoping for one, Simon. Yeah, I don't think it's been a, a classic game. Hopefully it can we'll pick up a little bit in the second half. I think if we get a few more crosses in against Burnley, I think we can cause a few problems. It's fair to say you played some of your best stuff in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, I think it, it livened up the uh, last sort of 10 minutes. I think we probably had the better of the exchanges. Uh, and hopefully we can continue that in the second half. What do you think it is? Do you think it's just a, a lack of confidence in crucial moments? Because things haven't really been going for you in recent weeks. Uh, I think we've had a little bit of a lull in, in uh, recent weeks. And uh, I think maybe a, a bit of a confidence factor. Uh, hopefully we can we can put it right that second half. But you've been around in, in this division a bit and Birmingham have not exactly made it easy for you to play here today. No, I think they've got numbers behind the ball and they've done it quite well uh, and they've made it extremely hard for us. Good, Simon, thanks so much indeed for talking to Thank us. You very much. Let's go straight back uh, to our commentary team, Harry Bassett and of course Brian Moore. Thank you, Jim, yes. Ready now for the start of the second half. We're hoping for certainly an improvement all round. In this second 45 minutes, it'll be Charlton who get it underway. Same, looking to pull out of this dive of four successive defeats and really what an incentive it is for a victory today taking them into third place in the first division behind Newcastle and Swindon who we'll meet at St James's Park next week incidentally Bowman well, with the header for Charlton Robinson here, he's got Grant and Lieburn waiting in the middle for him. Can he get the cross in? He can, it's not a bad one either. It just clipped the uh, top of Hicks's head. Otherwise, Lieburn might well have been in behind him. Some good work there by young John Robinson. And a throw for Charlton. Here's Minto. To Lieburn. Getting to Minto in again. Through his legs. Hicks again off the referee into touch for another throw to Charlton. Walsh to Lieber, to Gatti. Tries to get into Lieber again. I think he was really expecting that. He goes for the goal kick. Yeah, it was a poor first touch by Lieber there. He was involved in the build up. It was quite a good straight ball by Gatting. He'd be disappointed with his control there. So let's see. The boy from Bethnal Green just up the road. With the goal kick for Burnley. Upstead, popping it forward, Grant. Robinson, Palmer. Certainly a more purposeful look about Charlton in the opening uh, minute or two of this second half. Another throw for them. They seem to have come out and stepped their pace up a little bit. Uh, probably a continuation of the ten minutes before half-time. It'll be a throw for Stuart Balmer. Robinson. Potter gets it away. Up to speed. Sturridge. Donova. Potter. Back to Seeley. for Birmingham flip forward again Lee Byrne <laughs> just swatted uh, Speedy there as though he didn't exist shrugged him off he's a pretty powerful fellow Carl Lee Byrne, I must say but here at Birmingham still in possession but now Walsh the challenge came back from Rogerson
had a goal kick. Certainly went clattering to the ground with that collision with Carl Lieburn, David Speedy. Over 200 games for Chelsea, of course he played for Coventry as well. He had a spell at Liverpool, at Blackburn. Now he's on loan to Birmingham from Southampton. Lieburn. Speedy. Rennie. Farmer's header for Charlton. And a free kick to Charlton. Gatting with the uh, free kick. Balmer. Hit long towards Lieburn. But didn't really jump at that as though he meant it, David, did he? No, no, that's right. Uh, it was a good cross actually by Balmer and Lieburn on one or two incidents uh, in the air. One would have thought he'd have been a bit more of a threat. He seems to be reacting after the ball's uh, been delivered. But I think he's hit uh, Martin Hicks as well, who's got a bit of an injury there. The ball was in the air quite a long time, and one could have sort of expected him to, you know, get near it or on the end of it. Speed has dragged himself away to the left-hand side now. Here he is. In towards Sturridge. Speedy playing it in again towards Sturridge. Gatting policing him well, though, and gets it away into touch for a Birmingham City throw. Potter with it. Sturridge. Donovan. Playing it in, knocked away by Walsh. Uh, and a foul by Grant on Matthewson, a free kick. I think it's difficult when a club like Birmingham would be happy with a draw um, because they don't want to lose. Um, their attacking ambitions sometimes become a little bit negative for the wrong reasons. Well, Hicks has gone forward now, looking to get on the end of this free kick, and Lieburn's gone back with him, and uh, Lieburn got the header in then. France to the path of Bumstead. Now Robinson, that's a good ball played there for Bumstead. Just came off the Charlton player as well, so uh, it'll be a Birmingham throw. First to react, gets it through to Speedy. This is Holmes with Rogerson outside him. And Speedy here inside him. Rogerson. A bit of acceleration. Still with Rogerson. A good break by him. Finds Dono up. And past his man and well across the face of that Charlton goal. Sturridge almost got there, Speedy almost got there, and Robottom almost got there. Yeah, there was good play by Rogerson, and uh, Louis Donovan takes him on on the outside, and again, a good cross uh, across the front of the box again. Well, that might wake Charlton up again. Bumstead now finding Robinson. It's quite good work being coming down this right-hand side by Charlton, and Robinson this time uh, picking out Walsh on the far side. There's his cross, Pardew with the header. Oh! Well, Seeley, his judgment was fine there because he was just watching that. I assume he must have thought that it was going to go into the uh, over the um, crossbar there. She banged on the top of it. Pardew gets away a bit free there. 
and he would be a little bit disappointed with his header. But uh, yeah, that's a dangerous one. Les's judgment was 100%. But Pardew does well for them. Uh, he's breaks from the midfield. He's uh, scored seven times this season. That's right. He, he's looking to make the run, and John Bumstead sits in there a little bit for him and covers when he makes those forward runs. Yes, Pardew again up to Lee Burn. both going for that one. Gatting then can hook it away for Charlton up towards Grant. Matthewson winning it in the air for Birmingham. Knocked away there by Pardew. Minto making something of it. Gatting playing it now for Pardew again. He's got Robinson away on this right-hand side. It's the ball to Barmer instead. Now to Robinson. Played in quickly. Grant trying to get there and gets there first. Beating Hicks to the ball. Pardew again. Now Robinson. This is better stuff from Charlton. Donovan coming back to make it difficult for Robinson. And quite sure whether that was meant to be a shot by Robinson. It cannoned off Lieburn. And the fans giving a generous round of applause quite rightly to John Robinson there. Coming back and uh, making that ball his own and providing uh, Charlton with the throw. So Barmer with the throw. Up to Lieburn it again for Robinson played in there that could have gone anywhere in fact it was knocked away eventually by Sturridge Minto trying to keep it going for Charlton but it's gone out for the throw well, that looked a little more promising Dave Bassett yeah well, certainly the second half has started a lot more livelier you know uh, uh, Birmingham have had their good attack and Charlton have had several reasonable crosses and that was an excellent one and the uh, Birmingham defender did well to get the ball dug out of the six yard box Holmes for Birmingham there's a little bit more urgency about the game in terms of doing things quicker and movement. Rogerson finding Rennie. Hit long towards Donawa. Birmingham's throw. Terry Cooper, the Birmingham manager, means uh, when he says we've got no fears when he's on the ball. He's uh, first class. Yeah, he's very confident, boy. He's got an excellent left foot and he shows excellent sort of belief in himself and taking people on. Well, he's won this corner for Birmingham. Taken by Rogerson. And Sturridge hitting it wide. The flag was up for an offside. I think probably against Matthewson in any case. And Salmon very quickly with the kick and very well controlled, a difficult ball that for uh, Colin Walsh serves a little dummy to uh, the full back plays it in here for Grant now can Lever and get the better of the defender in fact there's a foul and Look, a free kick to Bobby looks six to one half doesn't the other though to Minto Speedy Minto gets in there again came off the Birmingham player Walsh with the throw That's Scott Minto and driven by Bumstead came off Grant fell for Potter Here's Ballman. Side flag up again. 
against either Speedy or Sturridge. Free kick to Charlton. Steve Gatti. Ardu. Obstead now. Playing it for Minto. There's definitely greater urgency about Charlton in this second half. Trying to force a few things to happen. Minto. And that was easy for Cini. I think the pace of the game has been picked up, whereas in the first half it was a slow pace and a little ponderous. Now people like Minto are getting forward and Pardew are making more forward runs. And Birmingham are just getting a little bit more space on the counter-attack themselves. Bottom, but wasn't bought by Bumstead. Got it clear. The linesman's flag was up in any case. It's a free kick to Charlton. Don't envy you your job of picking the man of the match today, Mr. Bassett. <laughs> Getting it away for Birmingham. Walsh. Lieber. Sturridge. Are you now for Charlton? Robert. Now by Robinson. Here's Balmer. So just over an hour gone now here at Upton Park. Charlton nil, Birmingham City nil. Grant, Ardu. Lieber now to Robinson. They're back again to Barmer. Robinson once more. Looking to get round the young fullback. And uh, claiming, I think, with some justification, although he shouldn't have done it to the linesman, that he was uh, impeded there by the young fullback, Potter. Well, he's got the free kick in any case. And Walsh lifting it in. really hit that one that would have been interesting that uh, if that was on target he hit it with some venom I think he hit one of his own team did he uh, Dave? I don't know it was a hell of a shot and uh, the bodies were in there I'm not sure which one whoever it hit well. did quite well to stand up about to make a substitution to bring on Gary Nelson click on there by Leeburn will operate down that left side of midfield supporting Colin Walsh on the left there he was left out of the side last week at Derby has just made the substitute I think it's the first time he's ever been dropped
Carter away. Gatting lost it for a moment. Challenge. Holmes now again for Birmingham City. Matthewson. Get long towards Speedy. Palmer turning away from trouble and putting it to where it's safe. Graham Potter. Simon Sturridge for Birmingham. Louis Donova. Speedy waiting in the middle there. So to is Rogerson, got the header and uh, Catting gets it away for Charlton. Help there by Walsh, a foul on him. And whether Robot had said something to the linesman there, I don't know, but uh, the linesman's flagging and away. And what's the referee to uh, take some action. the number 10 robot and who's uh, in trouble if there is trouble here and in fact uh, Mr. James is at least booking him it was obviously something he said uh, but uh, a yellow card Seems at the moment Cholton are still deciding who to take off uh, Gary Nelson. He's there waiting there. Obviously going to get him on at some stage, but I think they're deciding perhaps whether to put him on the left or perhaps down the middle. They'll probably take either Kim Grant or Lieber off, I would have thought, wouldn't you? Yes, they haven't been particularly effective down there. Sturridge making a good break here for Birmingham, but in the end, Balmer did well. The ball sliding across that Charlton penalty area with the Speedy getting in on the end of it could have been extremely dangerous. Birmingham then get a corner, a rare Birmingham attack. Ian Rogerson with the with the corner for them. Martin Hicks again up at the near post. Dave Wren is in there too. Matthewson at the far post. Speedy in there too, and a goalkeeper's ball. Skill that was. Halfway through the second half, still no sight of a goal. Matthewson getting it away. Robot and knocking it forward. Birmingham in the blue shirts here. Charlton, Minto, linking up well, but needed Grant to control that a little bit better. Play the return ball to the fullback who'd gone into a good, strong forward position just outside the Birmingham penalty area. A throw to Charlton. It'll be interesting now the last half hour with the boy Potter, who's played very well, but 17, he's still very young and his legs is whether he can last the full hour and a half. 
Well, it's Kim Grant who's going off, uh, Dave Bassett. Yeah, I thought it'd either be uh, Grant or Lieburn, as you said, because they haven't been particularly effective, and they probably feel they need to keep Lieburn on for the aerial threat, defending corners and free kicks. Gary Nelson, who I think requires one goal for, nut for 100 in the league. Well, there'll be some milestone to reach on this particular day. Lieber, Robinson. Minto. Nelson hitting a long cross towards Carl Lieber and there's his header. Robinson trying to get in there but Seeley got there before him. That was really the first header that Lee Burns got on the end of with any sort of memon really and it did cause a problem. Good cross in this by uh, Nelson. Yes. Colin Walsh he shrubs off that challenge there from Holmes and not behind by Matthewson the Charlton fans behind that goal felt that there was a shove on the Charlton man either Robinson or Lieber one of them in that box yeah you can't really see uh, I think it would have been harsh to have given a penalty but it was good skill by Walsh out wide who received the cross and got uh, a good cross in himself then with this corner for Charlton Eben tried for the little flick on Walsh might make something of it here Still turn by him Lieburn at the near post very nearly was in a position to turn it inside uh, two Charlton men against uh, Donawa Minto kept his head well there good play by Scott Minto Finding Gary Nelson, Minto always looking for that opportunity of going forward. And it finds a nice ball now for Gary Nelson. Crossed by him and behind for another corner. So Charlton's fortunes take a little upswing, but it's still nil-nil, but they get another corner. Certainly in the second half, Charlton have come out and been more aggressive in everything that they've done. And Minto's looked to get forward at every opportunity and uh, they've had one or two decent chances. Walsh with the corner for them. Pardew and Gatting waiting deep in the box. Another go. Just getting it away. Bumps it. Finding Walsh again. A deep cross towards Lieber. And there's his header. Oh, and a total miscue. The crowd behind the goal claiming that was a pass to the goalkeeper. In fact, it was a deflection. It came from a missed kick. I think it was. So, referee was quite right. Yeah, definitely. That would have been an injustice to give him a free kick there. Les Seeley did well. He got rid of the ball quick before anybody had time. <laughs> Kicked the ball away, which was a daft thing to do, Robotham. No, it wasn't no, Robotham. Louis Just, well, it wasn't, it was Donova. Just no, as well it wasn't. No, I think the referee wasn't. did extremely well there. It would have been wrong because they, they obviously wasn't passing it back. Right. It could have easily have spewed into the goal. Meantime, Sturridge is sitting down there. feel as if the Cholton crowd have got a bit behind them this half as well, whereas they were very quiet the first half. Here we are again, this is the, uh, was it a back pass, was it a deflection, you'll see quite clearly it was a deflection. Yeah, I mean they could have easily put that in their own net. That's right. If not, we must give Martin Hicks 100% for <laughs> kidding us all. Yes. <laughs> and it looks as though uh, Birmingham are making a substitution now. 
bring Ian Clarkson, who's a fullback on. Well, that's not Ian Clarkson. That's Mark Cooper. You can tell that's the manager's son, can't you? Definitely. He's got, a bit, got a bit of Terry about him, hasn't he? So, uh, Simon Sturridge going off. And Mark Cooper coming off. I wonder if they might move Louis Donover down the middle with David Speedy. Here's Walsh with the free kick for Charlton. Sorry, you think they might do what, uh, David? Possibly put Louis Donover down the middle and, uh, for Sturridge and uh, play him up front with uh, David Speedy. Because he's quite quick, Louis, and uh, I think sometimes he causes a few problems more down the middle than when he's wide. And here's the corner again, Walsh with it for Charlton. Towards Pardew, didn't quite hit him, but it hit Speedy on the head, not that David Speedy knew a lot about it. And uh, Balmer's kick, ending up in that sparsely filled terrace. So 75 minutes have now gone. And we still await the first goal. Pinto, Lieburn, Nelson, Walsh playing the ball in nicely there, Minto across the face of the goal, Robinson couldn't quite get on the end of it, but uh, a super move there by Charlton, Walsh holding it up a little bit, Minto making an absolutely exceptional run, and John Robinson here not able quite to get on the end of it. Yeah, it was good play there, and it's a good ball through by Walsh, Minto's on the run, and really, he's a little bit disappointed because he could have shot. And, uh, but having said that, the players have got to get in across the box. That was an excellent opportunity. Certainly with that replay, you can see how Robinson, how close he was to actually yeah. tucking that ball in. That's right, he could have actually just let it hit him and gone in. Robotham. Primus. It's a Birmingham throw. Let's see, just under a quarter of an hour to go. Graham Potter with the throw for Birmingham. Bumstead, Walsh, Minto. Now oh, Nelson, good ball from Minto. Lieburn waiting in the middle, it'll be a corner though for Charlton. I think Charlton sense they've got to now make the breakthrough to, to get the goal, to give them the full three points. Another corner. Nelson. Walsh playing it in again. Comes out to Barmer. Hit from a long way out. Seely prevented it going for another corner. Robinson. Matthewson away. Lieburn leaping for this one and actually got the head of him, but goal kick. been at their best this afternoon, Charles.